Hey everyone, Sherwood Small Pets here. So I'm here with my good friend Pierce, also known as City Pigs or Canadian KV, depending on which social media outlet you are on. And I'm here to do something a little different than I normally do, and that is an interview. Uh, basically, uh, if you guys watch my channel at all, uh, you know that I have a mix of rescue and breeder pigs, and also that there's a little bit of a, not a rift per se, but a bit of a, bit of a rift, uh, between the two groups, and I thought We've been working, a lot of us, to kind of try and bridge that gap. And I thought talking to a good ethical breeder that I have known for quite some time would help with uh, any questions that some of you guys have. So, uh, I prepared some questions. They're gonna go way off the rails, I imagine, as interviews tend to do. Uh, but yeah, Pierce graciously has, uh, decided to agree to this, uh, whatever it is. So I thought we'd get started, y'all good? Yep. Okay, cool. I'm good. Okay. The yeah, you're yeah, you're right <laughs> centered. Uh, so I guess we'll start. What got you interested in the guinea pig and show world? Uh, the Royal Winter Fair. The Royal Winter Fair got me interested in guinea pigs. That's where I got my first ones. Uh, we started off with two, a uh, boy and a girl. Uh, we got them at the Royal Winter Fair on the I want to say the first day of the show we got them, or of the Royal, yeah. and then liked them so much we went back for the actual guinea pig show on the Sunday, and uh, that's when I was like running around asking everyone if they have guinea pigs. Uh, we found one that we thought was a boy, we were told it was a boy, everyone thought it was a boy, which, you know, I didn't want because we had a boy and a girl, but my daughter begged and pleaded, please let us have it, let us have it, we brought it home, um, put them all together. I read on the internet that they don't get pregnant until, I'm sure it said 12 to 16 weeks or something. Of course they get pregnant at three weeks and uh, the boy got pregnant right away. And uh, her babies were so pretty. I thought that, you know, let's give it a try and take it to a show. So we went to the conference and uh, our very first one won uh, Best of Breed. I didn't know that. So it was kind of, uh, you know, from there. Sweet. Yeah, that's, well, and just as a little thing to hit, go in there, if you guys are interested in the guinea pig show, that is when in November? It's the... I want to say the 17th. Seven, it's the middle of yeah, November. Middle of November. It's the yeah. Sunday at the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair at the, basically, the Canadian Exposition Expo grounds. Yeah. Very soon. And you guys should show up. Oh, God, what happened to my questions? There they are. So... I've dropped the word ethical breeder around a couple, like a few times, and because there's, you know, because everybody, everybody in the rescue community that I knew ahead of time was like, oh, you know, breeders have like fangs, basically, and, you know, keep their guinea pigs in cardboard boxes. And I've described you and like Darlene and Greg and a bunch of other people as, you know, good ethical breeders. What, in your opinion, what do you do that makes you an ethical breeder? Uh... Your viewers probably wouldn't say I'm an ethical breeder. That's true. There's a lot of people who would say, because I breed, I'm not ethical. True. Um, there's a lot of myths and beliefs about guinea pigs breeding in general. For example, that one in three die in labor. In two years of breeding, I've lost one female ever in birth. I've never lost a live-born baby. I've never lost uh, a guinea pig giving birth. And I've had a lot of litters, so it's not like it's a numbers game of anything. Yep. If one in three die, I could tell you that maybe one in 60 for my numbers have died. Um, do I do anything different? Maybe. Um, but, you know, breeding is different than having guinea pigs and letting them have babies. It's very different. Um, Everyone says that they want to stop breeders from breeding because they should pass laws and not let breeders breed. Well, then, of course, in seven years, there would be no guinea pigs left in the world. So I'm not sure who came up with that radical, fantastic idea yeah. of just not allowing guinea pigs. See, they don't, they like don't they disagree. They do not like it. <laughs> they want more babies. Um, so there has to be a compromise. And breeding as a whole, I can tell you that I have found that most long-haired breeders don't tend to breed en masse. Um, a lot of people say that uh, breeders are in it for the money. Uh, I can tell you that I'm about to sell my first batch of Lunkira, 
and to sell each one will be about $100 to $200. Um, and I will have maybe 10 for sale, um, and that won't make back even a quarter of what I spent to get the parents here. So it would take me about five years of breeding and selling them at that price to make back the money that it cost me to just to get them here. Yeah. Never mind the food, the cages, everything else that you need to do, the vet checks and all that kind of stuff. So the reasons behind people breeding is different than what it's a lot of people think. Yeah, you actually just covered like three of my questions, which is sweet. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. So efficient. Yeah, because I was going to say, yeah, you've never, you don't, my definition of a good ethical breeder is the fact that you don't do it for the money. No, there are other... <laughs> <laughs> There's no money to be made in it if you're... When doing... <laughs> I do occasionally get to sell a guinea pig, it doesn't even cover... Their life costs. The food, the, the no. hay, you know. And in the beginning, when I started, I started out with um, my guinea pigs, I had no idea about um, feed stores and stuff. So I was paying uh, like $13 for a five pound bag of guinea pig food and, you know, a huge amount of money for a little bag of hay. A uh, huge amount of money for cages and cleaning the cages all the time. Wood shavings were costing a fortune. Of course, now that cost has gone down when you realize it doesn't cost as much as you think it's going you to. You can buy in mean, bulk. When you realize you could buy giant bags of wood shavings for seven dollars and huge bale of hay for seven dollars, and it gets better. But in order to breed enough guinea pigs to make even enough money to pay for your hobby, you would really need a lot. Like you would really, yeah. really need a lot, you would need a lot of buyers, and there just aren't. No. Um, even when people say, well, you can sell them to pet stores, you can sell them to people on Craigslist, you can sell them as food, you can sell them to reptile people, even then, the price people want to pay for them is never going to cover the cost of no. the hobby. So you're in it because you love them, or you're not in it at all. 